how can you get this in Power BI? Now, this is the question we're going to answer in this video, so make sure to watch till the end. In Excel, you're probably used to using fixed or absolute references, and sometimes simple things in Excel can become frustrating in Power BI. We're going to help you out here and show you how to approach this. Now, if you are a Power BI beginner or still feel like a beginner, then this channel is for you. So make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you're notified whenever I answer your Power BI question. So this question came from Sai inside our Learn Power BI family. And uh, Sai, thank you so much for asking this question. And thank you for everybody who jumped in to discuss this and get uh, get to an answer, especially Noel Clark. You can see this engendered quite a lot of back and forth and a lot of screenshots and DAX formulas going back and forth. Uh, I'm actually uh, going to show you a simplified version of that because I like simple. But uh, let's look at the question. And I'm also going to tell you how you can ask your Power BI questions. Uh, so the question was like this. So this was a starting point, And this is the example that was sent in is that, hey, let's say we have actual hours for 2021 right now uh, and we don't have for 2022 2023 uh, and oops this should be 2024 uh, you get the idea and often when members are starting out uh, you know I know I come from an Excel background and Excel has its way of thinking and frankly I felt uh, I'd been using Excel for years and I felt really really comfortable in Excel I knew my way around I felt pretty confident I could even if I didn't know the answer I could always figure it out but that can sometimes be frustrating in Power BI. But again, if you watch this video, you're going to not only figure out the answer to this, but maybe how to change the way you think and, and start thinking more like Power BI and less like Excel. And it's going to help you in a big way in the long run. But again, looking at from Excel perspective, uh, we're trying to do something really simple, right? So we essentially want to do, as you can see here, it is hard coded. So let me click on that cell again, right? So it is dollar B dollar two. And again, when I was working in Excel, this was, yeah, I mean, I knew it uh, pretty quickly, right? So absolute references. But how do you achieve the same thing in Power BI? So I promise I would, I would tell you how you can answer your questions. And it's really simple. All you have to do is go to learnpowerbi.com slash question. We're going to put a link in the corner. And uh, yep, it's going to walk you through what's the best way to get your questions answered. Now, by the way, if you do want to follow along with this video, then you can get this file at learnpowerbi.com slash download. Now, if you have any trouble with the download, don't hesitate in reaching out to me via email at avi at avisingh.com. All right, so we are going to solve it in Power BI, of course, but for a little bit, we're going to stay in Excel because I want to hold your hand to take you step by step from that Excel thinking to Power BI mindset, right? So again, here, we're trying to do this absolute reference. Now, of course, there is no such thing in Power BI. Uh, I don't know if you've heard me talk about it in my main tutorial, 60 minute tutorial. If you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. But one concept that we talk about is when we're creating measures, or formulas in Power BI, they operate as an island. They, they can't reference this one. There, there's no way. But they can reference other measures, right? So again, if you kind of get that, then you're going to see how the solution comes together. So again, Excel thinking, absolute reference in Power BI, the first thing that I'm going to do shift for you, hopefully, is that I'm going to just add this as a column here, right? So it's still an absolute reference and we're going to we're going to show you how to do that. But again, this is how I think like when I'm thinking in Power BI. So I'm like, hmm, can I do a column? Now, of course, I say column here, but I'm thinking a measure in Power BI. And again, measures are simply Power BI formulas. We gave them a cool name because they are pretty cool and awesome. All right, <laughs> so yeah, we call them measures. They're like formulas, but way more awesome. All right, so, um, so, right, so, so again, and it's the same stuff, right? So we just hard-coded this reference here, but now it's in a column and our formulas can still reference to it. But you notice what changed here, right? Now, this is a big change. This is what I want you to pay attention, right? So notice that now it's not an absolute reference anymore. It's simply, referencing another column. This is a column name. And where we can have column name, we can have measure names. All right, so now we're over in Power BI, and I've kind of recreated the same data and the same table. 
Uh, just a quick word on the data. Now I'm using a very simplified version of this data. Now we have the year and then we have uh, the actual hours and the forecasted hours. And then I did add a column here kind of plant location just to make it more interesting. Now, of course, real data might look quite different. Now, of course, this doesn't have to be ours. This can be finances, dollars, sales, budget, whatever, right? So it could be anything which is actual forecasted and maybe budgeted. Uh, and real data would have more complexity. It's quite possible that your actual table might be different. It might be more granular. So in this case, actual table is at a daily level and uh, the forecast might be at a monthly level and uh, uh, the actual might have a lot more detail, specific product, like to the, uh, and, and uh, the forecast might be at a high level. But for the most part, for this discussion, that we're gonna simplify that and use a si si uh, simple uh, solution, and that would still apply even if your data set has uh, uh, those nuances. All right, so let's keep going. So again, if we go back to what we had done in Excel, we had tried to create this column, kind of this fixed column. Now we can't quite do B, B dollar, B dollar two, but I'm gonna show you how you can do the equivalent. So you've seen the data set, and again, we brought it into, uh, into Power BI and defined some really simple measures. Uh, we have our total actual hours, which is just the sum of the actual hours, and we have total forecasted hours, which is just the sum of forecasted hours. And again, we have kind of replicated the starting point that we had in Excel. So, and now we're gonna do this next step, which is the absolute reference we've been talking about. So for this, we're gonna define another measure. So I'm gonna go to measure tools and click on new measure here. And here, I'm gonna say total actual hours. Now, I wasn't really sure what to call it. Maybe it's fixed, maybe it's baseline, uh, or maybe you wanna really hard code it and say it is 2021. I'm not really familiar with what's going on, uh, but I <laughs> hope you notice that I do think quite a lot about what to name my measures. Yeah, that's one of my obsessions. <laughs> they gotta be named right. All right, so we'll go with total actual hours fixed. Um, Again, I'm kind of debating between baseline, but total actual hours fixed, uh, and we're gonna you bring out our magic wand. So calculate is a magic wand because it lets us alter the filter context. Now, if you have no idea what filter context is, or only have a fuzzy idea, then definitely make sure to go through my 60-minute tutorial, or even better, my full Power BI training program. So calculate the magic wand, and what are we calculating? Well, we are calculating total actual hours, right? So that's that's uh, that's what we're calculating, and I love reusing my measures, but we just wanna uh, shift the filter context, and what we wanna say is we want to have a calendar year, uh, let me make it a little bit smaller, there we go, and equals uh, 2021. There you go, that's the equivalent of hard coding it. Let's see how this works. And for that measure, I'm gonna add add that here. And I'm just gonna change the order just so we have, oops, we have things the way we were doing it in Excel. So notice what we, have, what, what we had done in Excel. We had taken this and then we had kind of hard-coded it, B2, right? So hard-coding fixed reference, and we did something similar in here. And now you notice how easy it becomes, and that's what I love about Power BI and DAX and DAX measure. It's like once you, it's like Lego blocks. You build one small Lego block, and the next Lego block is super easy, right? So we're gonna play with some Lego blocks here. I'll add some more basic measures uh, with that basic math for variance and variance percentage, and I'll be right back. All right, my friends, so again, kind of like Lego blocks, so we, I love reusing my measures. So we already have the forecasted hours, actual hours measures. I just, you know, did A minus B, and then variance percentage. Notice that I don't even repeat the formula for variance. Since I have already calculated variance in a different measure, I just reuse that measure. So you see how the Lego blocks are stacking up, and then, of course, I divide it by this, and that gives us the end result. Now, of course, we don't really need the total actual hours fixed on here. I mean, you can take it off. It probably looks weird. So you can remove that. But, you know, since this is just a demo, I'll kind of leave it on there. Let's talk about some next steps. Now, you may or may not have noticed, 
but I'd intentionally turned off the total column because it's a little weird, right? So it works kind of for a year, but what's the right thing that should happen? And, and again, right, so uh, the numbers here aren't quite what I would want to see. I would, right, I mean, if I'm using this as a baseline, but then projecting it out, then I would like that to be reflected in my measure. We're not gonna quite solve it here. Instead, I'm gonna point, point out just the fact that uh, uh, this, um, this idea of comparing actuals versus uh, forecast or budget and or prior year and doing variance and variance percentage is actually pretty nuanced. In fact, uh, inside our Learn Power BI advanced program, there is a whole module on financial statements. Now, again, it, it's financial statements, but the idea of actual budget forecast variance can apply to a lot of things. It can apply to uh, work cars, as we saw in the example we've been working on, right? So the same concept applies, but it is nuanced. And uh, so the, the the examples in there kind of walk you through the whole process of how you can do all of it. You can compare your actual to budget, actual to forecast, actual to prior year, uh, project things out, project them out that, hey, based on the, the actuals and the projections, where are we supposed to land at the end of the year? So all of this there is inside our advanced training module. If you're interested, then go to learnpowerbi.com slash advanced to learn more. All right, my friends, hope you enjoyed that video. And again, if you have any questions, just go to learnpowerbi.com slash question or just drop me an email. All right, take care. I'll see you in the next one. Power on.